सूर्याय नम ओं सौ सुमाय नम ओं कुं कुजाय नम ओं बुं बुधाय नम ओं गुं गुरव नम ओं शुं शुक्राय नम ओं शं शनाश्वराय नम ओं राम राहव नम ओं कें केतव नम ओं a little bit more than this but whatever why vedic because we are understanding this as a service project why cosmology because we are not looking at the planets or the grahas we are trying to understand better our vibrational pattern karma is it reincarnation needed not actually If you want to put this in terms of quantum physics you can do it it's not necessary that you believe on the reincarnation to talk about this karmic periods this is the main point for today and what is the purpose the purpose of which karmic periods <laughs> the purpose of which karmic periods is the central question because if we are in the first karmic period the same agenda is not a necessarily authorized if you are in your high school or university you can be willing to learn wanting to learn engineer or medical science but this is going to be only allowed at university level not on high school so there are specific things that we can bring in in a karmic period and the other things that we need to wait we are going to read this so a little bit of what we usually call vedic psychology karma manifests primarily through our desires the desire is the creating force of the universe these desires from this life and less uh, previous lives will establish themselves into instincts and behaviors this is a big lesson people i'm just talking 30 seconds because it's not a class on vedic psychology itself but the main take here is if we become more aware of the fundamental desires of each karmic period our life becomes easier that's where we are leading the difference between linear and spherical perceptions of time in the west we believe that time is a thing that we can say this second the following second the following second and the, all the seconds has the same quality they are homogeneous and they go from the past to the future we are going to this is just an initial presentation but for us time has own like a rainbow it's formed by seven colors or any amount of colors that you want our karmic incarnation it's a rainbow that we have seven plus two colors the infra and the um infrared and uh, ultra violet and each one of those have an action and a function they go in a specific order they don't change the orders they can come back and forth but this is another point and the karmic the karmic time cycles will have a specific work to be done the first is going to be to understand the functioning of our body the second our belief system the third to raise our ability to be autonomous the fourth to be more comfortable or happy in life and the fifth is where we're going to stop today is the thing that 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 sentence you please note in the fifth karmic period the main mantra is if i die tomorrow at least i will have accomplished that at least since this is just a introduction uh, to a future course we are putting the 
points that we discuss in the course here so you can understand the big picture. The karmic perspectives on disease and their treatment, this is extra. I don't know if you're going to have time for that, but it's a possible topic for today. Okay, in the chat, it's fine. Now we are starting. How karma manifests through our desire, instincts, and behavior. We understand karma only as a thing, oh, I did this in last time, now I have to pay that debt, okay? But we also have credits from karmic uh, relations. And even if we are without any type of debt or credit, in, the, in that language, credits are not also actually necessarily good. <laughs> we still have the importance of desire. Rahu represents the need to be incarnated. So one ninth of our karmic patterns is that we want to be incarnated. And understanding the role of Rahu in our charts is very important. People say a lot of bad things about that guy. <laughs> but he. <laughs>